Okay, so today we'll just go over um, the three planes and basically all of the movements, the definitions of all the movements that the body does. Um, so I don't know what you guys know or don't know, it doesn't matter because we'll go over it all. But it's kind of important because it's the foundation for everything we'll ever talk about. You know, when we start breaking down the body into joints and we start talking about doing assessments, the, you'll have to know all of these things because the function of the muscle are the movements that we're going to talk about. So when we start talking about individual function of muscles, we have to make sure we're all speaking the same language with these movements. So there's three cardinal planes, and I, I think they're called cardinal planes because they're like the three primary planes. Um, there's an there's a infinite number of planes because we move in three dimensions. So it's, but there's no reason to worry about the all those different planes because the planes move with the body. Um, and although we're going to be talking about the three planes and the movements that are specific to each plane, it's important to know right out of the gate that normal, natural human movement always occurs in multiple planes, and sometimes all three planes simultaneously. So we're going to break the body down, or the movements down, but no exercises we do are going to be so isolated, unless we're doing rehab, um, are going to be so isolated that the body's just moving in, in one isolated plane. So, Jason already mentioned, I think, two of the planes. So what are the, the three planes? We can just do one plane at a time. What plane do you want to do first? Let's do front. Frontal plane? Isn't this fun? Okay. So, So we got the frontal plane, and so it says, I think it says on there that it bisects the body. How does the frontal plane bisect the body? If I remember correctly, doesn't it split the body in half from top to bottom? I mean, I'm sorry, not Get top your pen, bottom. water. Like if it was, if we took a razor blade and cut ourselves this way. Front and back. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it cuts the body into front and back halves, or, and these are words we're going to go over next week, but anterior, posterior halves. So, you said halves, anterior and posterior halves? Halves. Halves, P-A-C-H-S, halves? Halves. 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 Halves, Yeah, a front half and a back half, a pos anterior half, H-A-L-F. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> Paths. No, not paths. Um, so, if, and, well, let me take a step back. We'll start with that plane, but we're also going to start with the anatomical position. Do you know the anatomical position? It's basically just standing with your feet about hip width apart, toes forward, knees, hips, shoulders, ears stacked, and you rotate a little here, and I'm not going to say what motion this is yet because we haven't gotten to it yet but palms facing forward. So all movement is described from this position, the anatomical position, okay? So if I'm in, if there's a plane, and there is a plane, if there was a plane that, um, that divides the body in front, front and back halves or anterior or posterior halves, what movements can I go to from this position? Well, which, where's the plane, though? Where's the plane? Yeah, I don't want to move or I'll give it away. I don't, I'm not understanding what you're asking. Okay, if there was, a, if there was that mirror on that wall uh -huh. was cutting me in half, that mirror is the plane. Okay. So I have to move on that plane. Gotcha. So where would I move? Yeah, left to right, up and down. Right? So you wouldn't be able to move front and back. Yeah, right? so you're moving on that plane. Does that make sense, Chris? So if, there, if that mirror on the wall was a, was a plane that cut me in half, and I can only move on that plane, all I can do is go up 
There's another one too, but it's so. But we don't really have, we're not 100 percent sure what it's called. Um, so what movement is this? Abduction. Abduction. So it's if if it's moving away from your midline on the frontal plane, it's abduction. And then I th I think I have little spaces on your piece of paper for. This so the first one. The movements frontal. So that'd be frontal. So there's a spot for, for each movement there. So you, so yeah. So you've got abduction. And if it's returning to the, back to the midline, you've got adduction. And a, a really easy way to remember which is which is if someone is abducted, they're, taking, they're taken away. You know, if a person is abducted, they're taken away from their situation. So if something's moving away from the midline, it's abducted. And if it's coming towards, it's adding, it's adduction. Usually if we're speaking abduction, adduction terms, we don't do that to our clients. You know, it'll be a lateral raise. But a lot of times clinically, you'll say abduction or adduction, as opposed to just abduction or adduction, because in just flowing conversation, they both sound the same. So you may sometimes, when we get going and we're talking about something, abduction, adduction, we may get kind of clinical and say abduction, adduction, so that there's no confusion, okay? Where else, where else can that occur, though? Abduction, ad adduction occur. No, no. What other joint? Yeah. yeah. So that's hip abduction, hip adduction. You don't want your knees or elbows to abduct or adduct. That would be bad. If you've ever abducted or adducted your knee, you know why. It has a different term than that, but we'll deal with that when we get to the knee. So, in the frontal plane, our body is split into anterior and posterior halves. We're able to move in um, abduction and adduction. And there's some other movements. We can, we can right can lateral bend, right lateral, left, left lateral bend, bend. That's through, the spine. through the spine. It can hurt the cervical spine, it can hurt the lumbar spine. I suppose it can happen at the, yeah, it can happen at the thoracic spine. So we have right lateral bend, or it's actually right lateral flexion and left lateral flexion is the correct term, not bend. We're going to say left lateral, we're going to say bend to our clients, but it's flexion. Cervical lateral flexion. Cervical lumbar. <coughs> How many more are there? Um, Should be two, at least two more. Three more. Is there seven? Be seven. Yeah. Well, you have ab you have adduction. Adduction and adduction. For abduction. Your, your shoulder and your hip. Right. So I only did that as one. I just put. Shoulder okay. Hip. Okay. That's two. Okay. There's another one. Right here. Radial deviation. And then if you come, so if you go towards your thumb, radial deviation. And the reason why is if that's your radius bone, your arm bone. We're going to go over all the bones, but it's easy to remember because when you take somebody's pulse, you take it at the radial pulse. It's on the thumb side. 
The other is ulnar deviation. And what the other one is? Ulnar, U L N A R. You know, we're only going to get into radial and ulnar deviation if we're dealing with, with some therapy type stuff, some post rehab stuff with the hand and the wrist. But very important for golf. It is important for golf. And, and we could have a golfer who has some wrist problems and they might need therapy. How do you spell ulnar? U L N A R. Ulnar deviation. Yeah. Just typed in all these blank scores and then just went down and demonstrated. Ulnar, what's that? I said you should remembering fill all the Oh I did fill it all in. You'll get you'll get that next week in the follow up. But when writing helps. Yeah. So uh, there's one more. It's a little tricky. It's scapular. Elevation and depression. I mean, obviously, that stays on that plane. Up and it's just that mirror's there, up, down. It's so it's elevation and depression of the, the shoulder blade or the scapula. What about rotating your ankle? That's actually in another plane. And we're going to talk about it a little bit. It is, it is. You can just lift the outside of your foot just a little bit in the inside. Yeah, but it, it, calls, it falls into another plane. Doesn't. Yeah. Is that because of the way the ankle is designed? Yeah, it's because of the, it's because, it's because the, uh, the joint is rotating. It's rotating? Yeah. But to the naked eye, it just looks like. Yeah. Okay, so that's everything for the frontal plane. So I should have been taking notes as we go. I'm a I'm a auditory teacher. <laughs> yeah. Abduction, adduction, right and left, lateral flexion. Lateral Do you want to see here? I'll, I'll teach you guys a little note here. When we start taking notes, it's going to take up too much room, but that's okay. That's flexion. This would be extension. We've got radial and ulnar. We need a bigger board. Deviation. Scapular elevation and depression. Okay. So, like I said earlier, the reason we're doing this is because when we start talking about the muscles and we say the, this is its muscle function, these are the terms we'll use. You know, when we talk about, I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but when we talk about the upper fibers of the trap, we're going to say it elevates the scapula. We're not going to say it shrugs the shoulders. When we're talking, we're going to say it shrugs the shoulders, and we may not even mention the trapezius to our clients. We're just going to say shrug your shoulders. But through our, from our in-services, we've got to make sure we're all speaking the same language. Otherwise, when we get into the, the real, real detailed stuff with the joints and the function, um, there's, there's no confusion. 